My grandfather, Joseph Michael Martisich, came to America in 1903 at 14 years old from the Isle of Vis in the Adriatic Sea, now called Croatia. In those days, it was the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Very brave thing to do when you think about it. 14 years old with an eighth grade education. Not poor, had some money in his pocket, but going to America, to the Newfoundland, to prosper and thrive, and little did he know what his future would be. He landed in Cupertino, California, which is near Los Gatos, San Jose area, south of the Palo Alto Peninsula. Went to an aunt's home, uh, a relative, and then to San Francisco to take night courses and eventually earn his high school diploma. He was working day jobs and going to school at night. And he matriculated, he was very bright. He had ambition to go off to Berkeley, which is rather ironic because we're more of a Stanford family. And an opportunity came up to go into business south in the port of Los Angeles, namely Terminal Island, and be a partner in a fish canning company. He partnered with a man named Martin Bogdanovich and two others, and in 1917, November 1917, they incorporated in San Francisco and created the French Sardine Company. Subsequently, months later, they built their cannery at Terminal Island and opened for business in 1918. About seven years later, probably, you know, some stubborn Croatians trying to work together and very entrepreneurial anyway, he sold his shares out and founded the Franco-Italian Packing Company, a, a private label company, which was premier of its kind, packed for S&W Fine Foods, A&P Markets on the East Coast, S.S. Pierce. And the cannery grew from about 30 employees to well over 300 by the 1950s. Grandfather passed away in 1951. And it wasn't until after Grandfather had passed away that the French Sardine Company changed their name, and, and it was called Starkist, by the way. Each company had its own brands. There was Pan Pacific. There was Coast Fisheries. It, it all shrunk down. But it was a clearly important, vital part of this community. And I remember hearing the whistles blowing at night when the catch would come in. Each cannery had its own whistle, which was kind of interesting because the, there wasn't the same telecommunication we have today with cell phones and computers and so forth. And when the tuna came in, they had to start packing. It was, even though it might have been on ice for a while, if they're coming from Mexico or further south, they had to get right there to the line. And it was time sensitive because tuna was a perishable item and they had to get it unloaded, they had to get it gutted and cleaned so they could then go through the process of the baking and then putting it in the can. And when they, they had the tuna and they were ready to unload it, the whistle, the cannery that had the tuna and was ready to pack had their own whistle, almost like you would know Morse code, like an SOS or something. I personally don't know the exact whistle for Franco-Italian, but the people who were in our employ did know it and they were on the alert and they were like firemen jumping into their uniforms almost down a pole, getting on the bus, going down to the ferry building. There was a passenger ferry in those days as well as the automobile ferry, the Islander, and they would get over to the cannery post haste and get working on this. And even my mother remembers in the early days sometimes going in and delivering sandwiches for everybody because they had to keep feeding people. I don't know if they were tuna sandwiches or not. <laughs> But it was just so exciting in that sense. And it was the system of communication. 